Just imagine if your sense of smell was improved by 300%. How would you experience the world? We walk in a cloud of smell, and it's our personal smell, but it's also the smell of our clothes, our shampoo, our deodorant. All these things together make our cloud of smell. A dog's nose works like our eyes. The things we see are the things they smell. There's a new trend for animal detectives in healthcare. Dogs, cats, even rats. Here's one, a labradoodle called Dolce. The name of the dog is Dolce from Dolce Vita. And I'm training the dog in the hospital to smell urine and to detect prostate cancer in urine. Dolce meets a beagle, Cliff, who is on the hunt for C. diff. One of these patients has C. diff, but which one? It matters because C. diff is a highly contagious form of infectious diarrhea and it quickly spreads on wards and even between wards. So, so if you're not careful, you're going to have uh, a large part of your hospital infected with C. diff. So the Amsterdam team thought they'd try something quite novel. Go. A dog. So we've got a dog, but this is what you do if you don't have a dog. This is what we normally do in the laboratory. I've got some uh, suspected stool samples, and I put some of the, the sample in a tube which contains 70% alcohol. Yeah, we're going to have to speed this up. The tube is left for one hour. After that, you swab a sample onto a Petri dish. And that goes into a jar where the air is sucked out to produce an anaerobic environment. Then it needs to be cooked at 37 degrees Celsius for up to three days. After that, you have your sample. It smells really bad. <laughs> but that's not the end of it. So this is the normal way, but it takes some time and quite a bit of um, money. But also now we don't know whether the bacteria that we've cultured are actually the toxin-producing ones, because the toxin-producing ones are the ones that can make us ill. The toxin test is quite quick, it takes maybe half an hour. So it gives you a far quicker answer. However, it's not as sensitive. You need to have a stool sample and take the stool sample to the lab in order to be able to analyze it. There's a mechanism far more efficient than that. Well, a dog's nose is so much better than our nose. Our nose is working just a little, but it's mainly used to hold our glasses. And the dog's nose is, well, I think in general 300 times better than our nose. All the abilities within the nose, the cells, the little hairs on the cells, everything in this phenomenal little black thing on front of the dog. A well-trained dog and a talented dog could even smell, I don't know, maybe 500, 600 times better. Cliff is the first bacteria detecting dog in the world. So how was Cliff trained? With Cliff kept at a distance, faecal cultures and samples were hidden for him to find. You can see a really little brown dot. That's all that's in the tube. That's what we are using. He can smell it through the tube. I don't have to open it. He's brilliant. Well, that was easy. Let's try something harder. Bikes give off all sorts of smells. Human sweat, leather, oil, even dog feces on the tires. Will he find the C. diff here? Hotcha touches other bikes to act as decoys. Cliff knows that when his lead is switched from collar to jacket, he's starting work. Cliff knows exactly when he's working and when he's not working. 
I made it difficult for him. And we made the places to find it more difficult. When he sits down. Goed zo. Dat is heel knap van jou. That means he's found it. And still he could find it any time. Ja, dat is heel goed. Goed zo man. He did it again. So how well will Cliff do with real patients? Okay, we're uh, on our way to the hospital. Okay. There might uh, be a patient uh, with a C. diff infection, oh, so... Um, that's good news for Cliff. A good day for some sniffing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> It's a very clean and hygienic dog, but I think most important is that we try to avoid contact with the patient as much as possible, and also with the patient's surroundings. It's not actually not necessary for the dog to be close to the patient at all, and the dog can usually smell sea so lift or not by just walking past his bed. Yes, he found it. Little fella. Now let's see that from Cliff's perspective. No problem. Dag meneer, goedemorgen. Ja, ik... Ik kom even bij u. Zoals u weet, we zijn net met de, de hond op de kamer geweest. En hij is bij u ja, gaan zitten naast uw bed. En dat suggereert dat u een clostridiuminfectie heeft. Nou, vindt u in dat geval vindt u het goed dat we wat onderzoek doen voor een ontlasting? En dan kunnen we hopelijk zeker weten of u wel of geen clostridiuminfectie heeft. Ik wacht op die liggen dan. Nou, in de tussentijd brengen we u het liefst naar een kamer apart. Aangezien die bacterie van de een op de andere patiënt kan worden overgedragen. Dus dan kunnen we het beste apart voor zorgen voordat hè, de bacterie zich verspreidt over de afdeling. Is, is Jan nou besmettelijk? Uh, nou, het kan zijn dat hij besmettelijk is, ja zeker. Oh, en nu? Nou, dus we zullen hem zo snel mogelijk in een aparte kamer verzorgen. Oh, gelukkig, want ik wil morgen naar huis. Ik vind Jan een aardige vent om, maar ik wil niet uh, besmet worden door hem. <laughs> nee. Nee, nou dat is goed. Cliff did very well. Uh, he was over 90% accurate in his diagnosis of whether diarrhea was caused by C. diff or wasn't caused by C. diff. However, you must note that what, what Cliff did, he identified the patients not when they were on the toilet. They went to the toilet maybe hours ago and they were in their beds and he still could find these traces of smell of C. diff. What you'd aim for is that uh, a dog would, for instance, three times in the week, uh, scan the whole hospital, scan every ward and see if there's any C. diff. By Doing this, you'd hope to pick up new C. diff cases. Obviously, it takes a bit of effort to train a dog uh, and a bit of, a bit of time. So um, an alternative way would be maybe to uh, see if you can copy this concept by using electronic noses. And this is an example of a type of e-nose, or actually it's an, what they call an ion mobility spectrometer. And what you would do is you take a sample of, well, stool or feces, Different samples produce different patterns. However, you still need a stool sample, so you still miss the ease of having a dog that just goes past the patient. Many people can smell C. diff if the smell is really strong. Uh, however, to pick up the very subtle smell, um, you, you really need an animal, uh, like a dog, for example. You could even use a rat or a bee or a butterfly, but obviously dogs are most easily trained. Even rats are trained. They are good as well, but not as trainable as a dog. We are more used to dogs than to rats. There would be a difference, I think, if I was walking around here with a rat. It is just a single dog, but there's no reason to assume why Cliff would be particularly suited for detecting C. diff. I mean, dogs just smell very well. So it, it is a proof of concept. But it's very, very likely that you can train any type of dog that is suitable to be a sniffer dog to pick up C. diff. Cliff brings a lot of joy in the hospital. People love to see him and sometimes they especially wait for him to come when they have heard he will be. And that's really nice to see. 